Okay, thank you. Good day, everyone. And uh, I hope everyone is doing fine. I uh, welcome to this uh, important presentation on research methods. And I'll run you through on how proposal writing is all about. It's, it's meant to prepare you to embark on proposal writing. And as we are aware, the proposal is made up of three chapters, chapter one, two, and chapter three. Chapter one is the introduction, talks about the topic, objectives, the problems, significance of the study. And in short, you're just introducing your topic, which you want to propose to the supervisor, to the funders, or to authority for consideration so that once they authorize you, you can go and uh, start collecting data, uh, uh, bring your findings, analyze them, and draw conclusions that you can communicate to the stakeholders through presentations, conferences, as well as publication. Then chapter two talks about literature review, where you need to review literature uh, that's related to the topic and bring key issues in what is already raised by other researchers. And chapter three concludes by looking at methodology. And in, it talks about how you are going to carry out that study, because we are talking about scientific research meaning certain approaches must be standardized or something agreed upon, something everyone can note to, to say, yes, this is powerful. So what is a research proposal? A research proposal provides a systematic plan of procedure for the researcher to follow. So it's, it's, it's a lay, lay down procedure on how you are going to conduct research. It's always written in some future tense, in future tense, because you are proposing, I want to do this. So you'll be saying, I will, the researcher will, the study will, in future tense. So you need to come up with the research topic that you intend to pursue. And you need also to consider why is it interested, interesting to pursue this topic among several other topics that you can think of, that you can embark on. And also how one tends to gather and analyze data. These are the few indications that the proposal is rubber. So what are some of the guidelines? Of course, we should have we should read write between six to twenty pages, and we should use uh, that is excluding the title, uh, which is the cover page, table of content, the power, the budget, timeline, and differences. So six to twenty pages without these. Then you can use area or times new Romans font twelve, preferably one point five line spacing and it's encouraged that you use this one. It's always a must to include the table of content so as to guide the reader or the supervisor. It's also important to have the title page, which is the cover page, and it must have the following, full title of the study, what's the topic? Who is the author, the one proposing? So you say by, then you write your full name and ID number under your name. Then uh, you put up the statement, your research proposal submitted to Chalimba University as partial fulfillment for the award of Bachelor of Education Leadership and Management. Then the name of the institution down there is Chalimbana University, then town, Saka, Chongwe, Lusaka, and the year 2022. 
Now let's talk about the title briefly. So the research title is the first statement that should be put on top, no need of the logo, no need of the institutional name on top. Those are for the assignment, for research, it's the topic on top. You don't need to say topic, just take the topic and everyone will know to say this is the topic. And it must have the following, must convey to the reader the main focus of the research, describing what the studies are about, giving a quick summary of the idea in a personal or in a proposal or dissertation. So what is it? Are you talking about causes of malpractice? Are you talking about effects of malpractice? Are you talking about, about the impact of feeding program on the enrollment levels? Are you talking about the impact of the feeding program on academic performance? So what is it that you are talking about? It's important to indicate it clearly. And uh, it must link key variables that you want to talk about, causes of this on that, effect of this on that, and so forth. So it's always important that you write less than 20 words as your title. Your title should not be more than 20 words, so not more than 18 words. Between 20, 0 to 20, uh, between 0 to 18 is encouraged, encouraged. It must be something that you can manage, something within the time frame, something within the capability, and you're doing a bachelor's degree or master's, if it's PhD, what level? So you should be mindful of the level that uh, you are studying as you are coming up with a topic. It must be related to the field of study. Are you looking at management? Are you looking at leadership? Are you looking at general education? Consider the, the theme of your program. What uh, is it that you are studying? If you're studying business, the topic must be related to that. Are you looking at marketing? Are you looking at entrepreneurship? So look at the program that you're studying and come up with a topic within that uh, frame. Chapter one, it's introductions made up of the following elements. Number one, background of the study. So here you write a brief overview of the problem. A page or two can do. So what's the background of this study? When did it start? Was it there in BC? Was it there in Babylon, in the Greek Empire, among others? How about after AD, 200 years ago, and up to date, what is the current situation? So you give some detailed background to show that indeed you are aware of the genesis of this issue that you want to write about. Then you can also quote some literature. Uh, is it there in America? Is it there in Canada? Is it there in China? How about South Africa? How about now come narrow down to Zambia and present how the issue is in Zambia? So it must be written some chronological order, starting with the first to happen some years down the line, coming to the present uh, situation. 1.2 should always be a statement of the problem. So here indicate what the problem is all about. If you're talking about poor leadership and its impact on academic performance, what is the problem? Maybe look at the, the poor performance in many schools. Is it as a result of poor leadership? Are there some findings, some statistics proving that? If there is nothing on the ground, on paper related to that, then you can say there is a gap that you want to fill, and that can be part of the problem. So it must be stated clearly so that uh, everyone can read and understand. No sugar coating these threats. Be declarative as you are stating, and be uh, you know, stating summary form, not two, three, four pages. Even half a page or a paragraph or one page can do to state what the problem is all about. Purpose of the study indicates the main objective, the overall aim of the study. Then objectives of the study should have at least three objectives. One may talk about causes, the second one may talk about uh, the effect or the impact, and the last one may talk about uh, solution or measures to be put in place to control, to alleviate the situation. So here we are saying, 
come up with a minimum of three objectives in line with your uh, your topic and the objectives must follow smart acronyms means specific measurable achievable time frame and very realistic something achievable something realistic something very specific not very general not very general okay now these objectives when you state them come up with action verbs for example to uh, determine to analyze to examine causes of to synthesize to uh, let's say establish challenges faced by head teachers in the implementation of ICT or you can talk about uh, assessing the implementation of the new curriculum in schools. Uh, so what is the action verb that you are coming up with? The action verb must indicate that indeed this is a research and not a search. Objectives like list, state, define, those are too weak for a research. So go for some uh, higher action verbs that are so demanding so that uh, we can go deeper beyond uh, these uh, common objectives that are always stated in lesson plans. And the 1.5 research questions, so here you translate the uh, objectives into question statements. The first one is talking about causes of malpractice, malpractice, uh, exam practice in schools. The question could be, what are the causes of malpractice in schools? And put the question. So you are translating the objectives into question statements and put a question mark at the end. Therefore, it's very easy to write 1.5, which is research uh, objectives, uh, research questions. Significance of the study is talking about uh, the importance of this study. Who are the beneficiaries? Is it just benefiting you alone or beyond you? There are many millions of beneficiaries. Who are they? So the readers, the supervisor, you like to know them. Who are they? Are they the policy makers? Are they the policy implementers? Are they the government officials, the ministry, and so forth? Or students who are studying colleges and universities will make use of that information. So indicates how this study impacts the general public uh, uh, above all. So delimitation 1.7, delimitation of the study is talking about the background of the study. You can talk about the site, the area, the map. Are you going to go? Uh, beyond this, so you can indicate no, this study will just be limited to uh, Chongwe district or Chongwe zone or five secondary schools, and it will not go beyond this and that. So, what is the delimitation, the boundary of the study, the coverage of your study, the depth of your study you indicate? Then 1.8 talks about limitations of the study. So we are saying, what challenges are you likely to face in this study? There is COVID-19, as you are collecting data, are people going to be free with you, not knowing where you are coming from, maybe you are carrying this virus called COVID-19. So what challenges are you likely to face? Are you going to have financial challenges about accommodation? or maybe looking for uh, the participants. For example, you're looking at the re-entry policy. Those who are pregnant and coming back to school. Now, if you want to go and uh, identify those and recruit them in your study, are they going to parade themselves to say, us, we are pregnant, we were pregnant and we've come back, we are here, can you interview us? It's something all of someone always no heights. So how are you going to uh, arrive at these participants? How are you going to trust them? How are you going to know them? What criteria are you going to use? So the, 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 you are likely to have a limitation in that regard. If it's in accounts on to 
uh, investigate about uh, causes of misappropriation of funds in schools, in colleges, universities, or public institutions. Uh, what could be the challenges? Can the accountants, managers be at easy and share their financial statements with you so that you scrutinize them? So it's important that you may be mindful. Some may prefer hiding their financial statements so that uh, they are not paraded in case you mismanage the data and release it to the general public. So they'll be so careful to protect their, their uh, financial statements, their integrity as an institution. So you're likely to have challenges in uh, uh, recruiting institutions to the study. What theory are you going to look at, theoretical framework? Or maybe you may not, you, here it means uh, there are two, theoretical and conceptual. So you choose one. Which one are you going for? The difference between the two is theoretical, maybe based on some theory. For example, you're looking at motivation of the employees of the teachers in rural areas. How can they be motivated? So there you can look at, uh, let's say, Maslow's hierarchy of needs, the theory of Maslow. So the theory of Maslow, uh, here you'd be required to indicate it uh, when it was developed by who and how it's related to this study. Conceptual framework on the other, on the other hand talks about uh, how the variables are interrelated, for example, causes of uh, dropout of pupils in schools. What are the possible causes? Is it corporal punishment? Is it poverty? Is it distance to school? Is it uh, ill-qualified teachers? Is it lack of role model? So those can point to the cause, which is dropout. You draw them in some di diagram, or you narrate them, how they relate to the topic. Then put up definitions of operations of terms. We can end here, we've looked at chapter one, and uh, next time we'll look at uh, literature review as well as chapter three, which is methodology. Uh, thank you so much for your attention, and we can open up the discussion. Thank you, and God bless.